great strength and impossible tasks isn't always given to demigods, great warriors, or even your everyday man. On occasion, the mere child can be given these great journeys, like Ness, the psi-powered boy from Earthbound, and Frisk, the fallen child from Undertale. Now, since there are multiple different types of runs in Undertale, we'll be going with True Pacifist and the False Genocide run, and they will have access to only the best items and equipment in the game attributed to both of those runs. And for Ness, we'll give him his most powerful equipment and all of his powers. I'm one fish mop, and it's my job to see who would win in a fight. Gygas, the embodiment of evil. Gygas was successful in taking over the earth and plunging it into darkness. He seemed unstoppable. That is, but a great prophecy foretold that he would be defeated at the hands of a mere 13 year old. And that kid was Ness. With this knowledge, Ness had no choice but to begin his journey to stop Gygas once and for all. But Ness can't do this without some heavy hitting weaponry. He has a yo-yo specifically built for combat, great for close ranged attacks. And if he wants to cause severe damage, he can use his trusty baseball bat, which is powerful enough to send enemies flying off into the distance if they're damaged enough. Not only that, Ness is fairly agile, being able to dodge multiple shots from a dark cannon. But his true bread and butter are his psi powers. Yes, this child holds a vast array of psychic powers used for several different purposes. He can use paralysis to paralyze enemies, use life up to recover health, use Psy Rockin to damage all enemies, and use healing to heal status ailments. But he does have a few favorites. He can erect the shield to cut all damage taken by 50%, though it will break after 3 hits. With PK Thunder, Ness summons bolts of lightning to strike random targets or be used to launch himself across the stage at incredible speeds. Ness can also teleport to any locations he's previously visited or form a psychic field to absorb most energy based attacks to replenish his health. But his more noble attacks are PK Fire, an offensive psi ability that works on a single row of enemies and has the possibility of decreasing one of the target's Psy shield strengths by one. The other more notable attack is PK Flash. Though it has random effects, it has the chance to make the opponent cry, make them feel strange, paralyze them, or straight up defeat them in one hit. But its most powerful Psy power is PK Starstorm, a powerful attack only taught manually to those who have earned it that works on all types of enemies is impossible to avoid and has the possibility of decreasing one of the target's psychic shield strengths by one. Ness for certainly proved himself a powerful fighter. He's powerful enough to destroy the Pig King statue with a single PK Flash and knocked over the same statue with one PK Thunder. Ness has also taken down huge monsters such as the Kraken and a dog completely made out of solid diamond. He's even tough enough to survive multiple attacks from Gygus, who is a universal cosmic destroyer and of course even helped defeat him. But Ness is still a child, and as a result isn't perfect. He is vulnerable to hypnosis and paralysis and has significant range issues in most of his attacks, giving him poor ground approach. His recoveries are easy to intercept and he has usually relied on friends to help him win battles. But his biggest problem is that he has trouble knocking out opponents, mostly due to its poor range and surprisingly weak KO power. However, Ness has proven to be a strong fighter, which goes to show you, never judge a book by its cover. Mount Abbott. Legends say those who climb the mountain never return. And boy are the legends more true than not. Mostly because the mountain acts as a prison which holds monsters. And the only way to break out of this prison is with the power of seven human souls. 
For the longest time, the monsters of the underground only knew humans as the enemy and the reason they were trapped there. Until one day, one human fell into the underground. And this human was Fresk. Once trapped in the same prison the monsters were, it was ultimately up to this child to decide what to do. To show the monsters mercy, or to fight their way through the many cave systems and caverns. However, Frisk is no pushover. Their most notable ability is their agility, being able to dodge swarms of spears, bones, fireballs, energy blasts, and all other kinds of attacks. Their other most notable ability is their determination, the very thing that allows Frisk to survive in the underground. If Frisk dies or their soul breaks, their determination alone can bring them back from death or refuse to die. But Frisk does not solely rely on those two things to survive whatever the underground throws at them. They carry all kinds of items to help them recover health. The steak in the shape of Metaton's face restores 60 HP. The butterscotch pie heals all HP. And the CT restores 10 HP and increases Frisk's speed for the entire battle. But they don't just carry healing items. They also carry weapons and armor. The empty gun deals 12 damage and hits 4 times very fast. The worn dagger may be perfect for cutting plants and vines, but it's the second most powerful weapon in Undertale, dealing 15 damage to any enemy struck by it. And the Temi armor. The second most powerful armor in the game, it increases damage dealt by 10 and increases defense by 20. And as a bonus, it recovers 1 HP every other turn and increases invincibility frames up slightly. But Frisk's most used and most useful power is Reset. An ability said to be only worthy of a god. The Reset option is gained through Frisk's determination. Whenever Frisk uses Reset, they can reset the entire timeline back to a certain save point or to the very beginning of their adventure. And as a bonus, Frisk remembers all that happened in the previous timeline and learns from it. Frisk has proven that they are nothing to mess around with. They survived the absolute god of hyperdeath and saved every monster in the underground. They also survived the skirmish with the Undying Undyne and defeated Metaton EX. They are also powerful enough to battle and defeat god tier foes like Fellowship Flowey and were able to defeat Asgore. And in the false genocide run, killed nearly all the monsters in the underground, including the likes of Undyne Asgore, highly trained royal guards, and Metaton Neo. However, Frisk isn't perfect. Frisk's health is limited and can still die if they take enough damage. As well, a being with determination greater than Frisk's can steal the reset option for themselves. However, Frisk is always determined to continue fighting for whatever goal they wish to reach. And that's something that can't be changed. Alright, the fighters are ready. Neither will get the home field advantage and neither will have prep time or outside help. It's time to see who would win in a fight.
Well, that was something. Anyway, in a simple brawl, Ness simply had the advantage in almost everything. Ness's healing powers would be a lot more abundant and reliable than Frisk's one-time use items, and his powers could easily catch Frisk off guard and set them up for the feat. It also didn't help Frisk that they would have to get in close to Ness to do any kind of damage, putting themselves in close range of Ness's powerful arsenal. However, it comes down to the tiny little details that turn this battle into Frisk's favor. For one, Frisk did all the stuff they did all on their own, while Ness usually has a group of friends with him during combat, giving them more experience in one-on-one -on -one battles. And even though Ness is more than capable of killing Frisk, Frisk would be able to dodge most of the attacks that Ness would throw at them, and add the CT to boost their already impressive speed, and that for a Scott who had experience with attacks similar to Ness's, Frisk would be able to outclass Ness's agility and dodge nearly all of his attacks. Heck, even if Frisk was hit, the Temi Armor's constant health regeneration would easily keep Frisk alive and fit enough to continue the fight. But Frisk's true trump card was their ability to save and reset the timeline. Every time Frisk would die, they would go back to a certain point in time with all the memories of what killed them, allowing Frisk to learn about what Ness can do and how to eventually defeat him, while Ness wouldn't even have the slightest clue about the resets going on or retain the memories of him killing Frisk. Heck, even if Ness were to simply run away after injuring them, Frisk's determination can easily bring them back from the brink, as seen in their battle against Azrael. And before you say Ness has fought all kinds of monsters, bad guys, and deities, so did Frisk. In the end, it looks like Mercy was off the table for Ness. The winner is Frisk.